In this video, we will be finding how wide a cooling tower is at the highest point. This cooling tower is going to be a hyperbolic shape, so something along the lines of this, and this bottom, this bottom, and this top are going to be connected. Um, and according to this problem, we know that the cooling tower, which is this hyper, uh, hyperbola shape, is 100 meters wide at the base. It is the most narrow section, which we can obviously see this middle section is the most narrow, is about 100. I'm going to say that's the most narrow. Is This is part is about 100 meters above the ground. And then we know that this is about 40 meters wide, according to the problem. And we know that from the ground, which is here, to the highest point, it's 160. So we already have 100 till our narrow point. So we have another 60 meters to go. So 160. Um, and now we're going to center it at our origin, meaning that this is the 0, 0 mark. We have positive 50, 0, and negative 50, 0 on this side, Oop. and negative 50, 0 on this side. Now, the axis of a hyperbola, we can see it's horizontal, right? From here to here, it's horizontal. If it looked something like this, it would be vertical. Now that we know it's a horizontal, the equation for the axis of a hyperbola when it is horizontal is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. Next, we will find the vertices of the hyperbola. And the vertices in this scenario, we know that it's centered at 0, 0, right? So you know this is 0, 0. The vertices would be right here and right here. And since it's at zero, zero, that's also zero, zero. And to the left, we're going to the left, half of 40 is 20. And since we're at zero, zero minus 20, so we are at negative 20, zero. And 40 by, uh, divided by two, we got 20 on our left. We're gonna do the another 20 on our right. So zero plus 20 is positive 20, so we have 20, zero. Now, to find A, we look at the distance between the vertices. The distance is 40, as stated in the problem. So 40 is equal to 2A. The most narrow section, or the vertices, the distance between them is equal to 2 times our A value. And we see our A value right here. So 40, if 40 equals 2A, we should divide both sides by 2 in order to find A. So 40 divided by 2 equals a. 40 divided by 2 is just 20, so 20 equals a. We can now sub in the value of 20 into our equation. So we have x squared. So now we have x squared over 20 squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And we can simplify that down to x squared over 20 squared. 20 squared is just 400 minus y squared over b squared equals 1. All right, now that we have this, we are going to do the same thing, but now we are going to be utilizing the base. of. We know if that's 0, 0, and we're going 100 and down for our base, we are at our some x value, comma, negative 100, and again here, we're also still at some value, comma, negative 100. To find that some value, we're going to take 100, and 100 divided by 2 equals negative, uh, equals 50. And we're going to go 50 in both directions. So for 0, 0, 0 minus 50 is negative 50, and 0 plus 50 is positive 50. So our coordinates are negative 50, negative 100, and positive 50, negative 100. Now, we are going to substitute these values into our equation. So we're going to substitute them back here. And our a is going to stay the same no matter what in this hyperbola. So we're going to take one of our points. In this scenario, I'm going to take 50, negative 100. 
Our 50 is our x value and our negative 100 is our y value. So we have 50 squared over 400. Remember, the four, a squared is not changing. Minus y squared. In this scenario, our y value we stated was negative 100. 100. So we have negative 100 squared over b squared equals 1. Now we're going to simplify that. So we have 50 squared. 50 squared is just 2,500 over 400 minus negative 100 squared. So a negative squared is going to become positive, And 100 squared is just 10,000 over b squared equals 1. Now we're going to simplify both sides of our fraction. So we have 2,500 over 400, which simplifies down to 25 over 4. You can just think about it as crossing out these zeros. 25 over 4 minus 10,000 for b squared still equals 1. Now we are going to be subtracting 25 over 4 from both sides. So now we are left with negative 10,000 over b squared equals 1 minus 25 over 4. And 1 minus 25 over 4 is simply just negative 21 over 4. So we have our left side saying the same negative 10,000 over b squared. So we have negative 10,000 over b squared equals negative 21 over 4. The negative values, since they're both negative on both sides, we can cross out our negatives. So we're left with 10,000 over b squared equals 21 over 4. Both sides are positive. We just got rid of that negative. And now we're going to do simple cross multiplication in order to solve for b squared. So now we have this times this, whatever the product is of that, divided by that, which would give us b squared. So we have 10,000 times 4, which is 40,000, divided by 21 will equal b squared. 40,000 divided by 21 is going to be left as 40,000 over 21. So we know 40,000 over 21 now equals b squared. We're going to leave it as that fraction until we are solving for our final part of this problem. So now we are going to substitute. If you remember, the question was asking for the width of the highest part of this hyperbolic cooling tower. So we know that the hyperbolic cooling tower is 160 meters high, correct? And we know that the first 100 are from negative 100 to 0, and the other 60 is right here. So we traveled 100 here, and we're traveling the last 60 up here. So we have 100 minus 60, so we're left with the 60 here, as stated. And now we're going to replace that 60 into our equation, if you remember, which was x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. We stated previously several times that our a squared is 400, so it's 400 minus our b squared. And again, we stated right up here, our b squared is 40,000 over 21, so we have minus 40,000 over 21 and now we're going to substitute in our y value and our y value is just this 60 because this is the y-axis this is the x-axis and we're changing in the y-axis so we are taking the 60 and remember y squared so 60 squared and we still have our x squared here we haven't found that yet so we're going to go down here simplify that so we have x squared over 400 minus 60 squared is just 3600 over the 40,000 over 21, which all equals 1. In order to divide this fraction, remember when dividing fractions, we're just multiplying by its reciprocal. So we have 21 over 40,000 times 3,600. 21 over 40, thus for this side of the fraction, we're just getting rid of that 3,600 in our numerator. Um, so we have 21 over 40,000 times 3,600, which all uh, equals 1, and we have our x squared minus 400. Okay. Now, 
we are going to do that simple multiplication. We have, we're going to have x squared here minus x squared over 400 minus 3600 times 21 is 75,600. And remember, our only our numerator is getting affected. Um, our denominator is going to stay the same at 40,000. And that's still all of an equal one. Okay. Now that we have that, we are going to just simplify this fraction down. So our left, our first fraction is going to still remain the same as x squared over 400. And 75,600 over 40,000 just is a decimal of 1.89. That all equals 1. So now that we know that it's negative 1.89, we're going to move the 1.89 to the other side, which means we're adding 1.89 to both sides. 0.89. So negative 1.89 plus positive 1.89 is 0. So we're just left with x squared over 400 on our left side equals 1 plus 1.89 is 2.89. The 1 plus 1 and our other two decimals stay the same equals 2.89. Now that we have that, we're going to, again, we're trying to solve for x squared. So we're going to multiply our by our denominator on both sides in order to get just x squared. So we have x squared over 400 equals 2.89. And now we're multiplying both sides by 400. So we have 400 times x squared equals 400 times 2.89. And now we're just left with... We're just left with x squared equals 400 times 2.89. 400 times 2.89 is simply just 1,156. And so now, now that we know that x squared equals 1,156, we have to get rid of that square. So we have x equals the square root of 1,156. And the square root of 1,156 is x equals plus or minus. Remember, it's a plus or minus when I'm reading the square root of a number. So we have the plus or minus of 1,000, plus or minus the square root of 1,156. The square root of 1,156 is 34. So we, na we know that our x-coordinate is, again, centered at the origin. But then we're going to the left, 34. So 0 minus 34 negative 34, parenthesis, and a comma, and we're still at the 60 mark on our y, the positive 60 mark on our y-axis, and we still have to go to our right side because it's two parts, and so that is 34 plus 0, since we're still at our origin, 34 plus 0 is just 34 positive, and we're still at the 60 mark on our y, so 34, 60. So these are our two coordinate points for this top part. Let me just draw it out here. So we, we know this, we know that, our narrow point, we know our base. We are looking for the width from here to here. And so we know this most left part is negative 34, comma, 60. And this most right part is positive 34, 60. Correct? And the width is going to be the distance between this and this, since we are looking at our x-axis. This is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, just for reference. So now how I like to think of it is just distance. So we can just take the absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 34 is positive 34. Is just the distance from 0. That's the absolute value. And again, 34 to 0 is just a distance of 34. So 34 plus 34 equals 68. And again, we are in meters. So the total width of the highest point of our cooling tower is 68 meters. That is how you solve this problem. Thank you, and I really hope this video helped.